Greetings, Michael Didier here. Thank you for joining us today. We last week covered Deuteronomy 1, 2, and 3. It was kind of the history lesson of what we've done for the last 40 years. Listen to how it starts. It is an 11-day journey from Horeb by way of Sair to Kadesh Berea. Remember, we left Horeb in the second month, 12th day of the second year. 11-day journey from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea, Barnea by way of, it says, Sair. Only took us, look at the next verse. It came to pass in the 40th year, the 11th month on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to Israel's seed according to all that Jehovah had given him commandments to them. It took us 40 years to get and do an 11 day journey. We were rebellious. We had uh, 600,000 men minus two, well, minus four maybe, because Aaron and Moses lived also. They didn't go into the promised land, but they lived for the next 40 years. Maybe in a sense, they were gonna die in, the, in that 40 year period. But a lot had to happen. It says he spoke to us in Israel on this side of the Jordan, first verse in the wilderness, in the plain opposite Soph. Talking about all the things that happened and all that Yehovah spoke to us after we crossed the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. He said he multiplied us. It says, Yehovah, your Elohim has multiplied you and here you are today as the stars of heaven in multitude. Isn't that interesting? The stars of heaven in multitude, they can be numbered. We had 600,000 men, 600, 600 plus thousand men. Remember, we said, Yasher said 700,000. I think 600,000 is more accurate because when you add up the numbers, when we added up all the tribes, it came out to the 600,000 number. Remember at that point too, he told us, he started giving us the history lesson. He reminded us what happened in the wilderness. We chose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men to be heads over us. Remember, this is what we did. Leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of tens, leaders of our fifties, leaders of ten. We sent out the spies. You know, we got to be careful. Let's be aware of the things that are being said in Deuteronomy. It says, every one of you came near to me and said, let us send out men before us. Is that what happened? In Numbers 13, it says, and Jehovah spoke to Moses saying, send men out to spy out the land of Canaan. That's not the same thing. They came back and we heard their report and we rebelled and we complained in our tents. And Yehovah was irritated with us for the things that we had done. He says, Yehovah heard the sound of your words. Here it is in 34. And was angry and took an oath saying, surely not one of these men. Talking about men, 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 men. Not the ladies. The ladies didn't have to die. The men had to die. The ones who were numbered. Surely not one of these men of this generation shall see the good land which I swore to give to your fathers. Well, remember what happened at that point? We rebelled. He said, go back south. Go back to where you were. You're not going into the land. And we said, oh, we want to go into the land. And so we acted, it says, presumptuously and went into the mountain, verse 43. And 44, it says, and the Amorites who dwell there. Remember, Amorites are Amari, the sons of Amari, who is a Canite. Amorites are one of the, oh my, it must be like 10 or 
12 tribes of the Canaanites. This was Amari. You know, I wanted to point this out last week, and I failed. Uh, I got distracted because of what it says in the rest of this verse. It says, The Amorites who dwelt in the mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do and drove you back from Sayir to Horma. Sayir? No, not Sayir. We were driven back from the mountains of the Amorites. Where is that? Let's take a look at this because we missed it last week and it was my fault. I, I was so intense on looking at Sayir and what it, what it should have said because we went to the mountains of the Amorites, not Sayir, that I got distracted. Let me show you on my map. And I think this is very important. Here we are in Kadesh Barnea. Let me just reduce this a little bit. Down here. We went to the mountains of the Amorites. But Sayir is way the heck over here. It says, and they drove us back to Horma. Here's Horma. There's no Sayir involved in this. What is involved in this and what's going to play a very significant role in numbers when we come back the second time is us remembering that we went into these mountains, we fought with this man, the king of Arad. The king of Arad and all the cities that were around him, and they drove us back to Horma. This is what happened the first time. But look at what it says in Numbers. I pulled this out this morning. I wanted you to see this. I said, we fought with the king of Arad and all the people around him. This was all the cities that were around him. He sounds like he's a major king. This has to be why we were afraid when we heard he was gathering against us 40 years later, because we got womp stomped, because Yahovah did not go with us. He says, don't go. I'm not going to go with you. Look what he says, 42. Tell them, do not go up nor fight, for I am not among you lest you be defeated before your enemies. Well, we were. Look what it says. The king of Arad, the Canaanites. This is in uh, Numbers 21, 1 and 3 on the right-hand side here. The king of Arad, the Canaanites, who dwelt in the south, heard that Israel was coming on the spies' way. The road to Atharim is what it gets translated often as. But it's the spies' way. It's the way of the spies. This is what happened the first time. We went the way the spies went. They were waiting for us, drove us back. As, what did it say? Bees. Well, here, it says it here. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. So Israel made a vow to Yehovah and said, If you will indeed deliver these people into my hands, then I will utterly destroy their voice or their cities. And Yehovah listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them in their cities. So the name of the place was called Horma. Remember what they said? In fact, I think it says it here. Let's take a look. And the Amorites who dwelt in the mountains came out against you and chased you as bees do and drove you back from Sire, not Sire, wasn't Sire. It was the king of Arad to Harma. We learned the fear of these guys the first time. And the second time when we saw them take prisoners, our fear rose up. And remember what happened? We left, and the Levites had to come and get us and bring us back. Finally, we made a pledge with Yehovah. This is what we're reading right here in Numbers. That if he will go with us, what did it say? Uh, if you will indeed deliver this people into my hands, and I will utterly destroy their cities. We did. First place we went. Well, we stayed in the wilderness a good long time. And finally, 38 years later, we began to come back into the wilderness. 
from the wilderness. It says, now rise and cross over the valley of Zerad. So we crossed over the valley of Zerad. And the time we took to come from Kadesh Berea, Barnea, until we crossed over the valley of, of Zerad was 38 years. Again, what should have taken days took us 38 years to get back to the same spot that we were 38 years before this. Valley of Zerad. Here's the Valley of Zerad. I love finding these things on the map. Here it is right here. Yeavarim, remember we came this way up the Valley of Zerad to the King's, King's Highway, I think they called that. There's the Valley of Zerad. And we took it to Aroer and then into, they said, the kingdom of the Moabites, which happened to be ruled by Sihon, king of the Amorites. More Amorites. But I think after our defeat of King Arad, we weren't quite as afraid of the Amorites as we had been. Let's move to uh, 18. He said, this day you shall cross over the Ar." the boundary of Moab. This is the Arnon. The Ar is at the bottom of this river, it sounds like. And we had the other other uh, river. What was the name of the uh, other city, rather? It was Aror. There it is right here, Aror. Okay. We cross over the Ar, the boundary of Moab. What did we do? It says, this day, I will begin to put the dread and the fear of you upon the nations under the whole under the whole heaven, whole heaven under the skies, who shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. Oh, this day you will cross over the R. This day I will put the fear of dread into you. There we go. We took all the cities at that time utterly destroyed the men, the women, the children of every city. We left none remaining. We're going to talk about kind today. Kind. Talking about kindness. Kindness. Kindness comes from kind. Yehovah created bug kind and behemakind and mankind, but he also created spiritual mankind. I think there's a great difference and we don't understand the difference because there's very few who are spiritual men in this day and age. He says, we took only the livestock as plunder for ourselves with the spoil of the cities. Well, we left there. In the next chapter, we did the same to Og, king of Bashan. Verse 3, so Yahovah, our Elohim, also delivered into our hands Og, king of Bashan, and all his people. And we attacked him until he had no survivors remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not, not a city which we did not take from them. Sixty cities, all the region of the Argav. Remember, we were talking about the Argav. Uh, it was kind of like a, uh, uh, an island in the wilderness. Bashan was a large, vast grazing area. Good for cattle, as was Gilead. But in the middle of that, there was an island that rose up. It said 20 to 30 feet, and it was 20 by 30 or 30 by 20 feet wide and long, long and wide. 60 cities on it. Must have been an amazing thing. It says they had all these cities were fortified with high walls, gates, and bars, besides a great many rural towns. How did we take them? We had no siege weapons. Remember, we talked about Israel's seed and their ability to run fast, jump high, lift powerful things, tear things apart. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. 
he goes on, and this land which we possessed at that time from the Arar, remember that's where the Arnon River, which is by the Arnon River, and half, half the mountain, why does it say half the mountains of Gilead and its cities? I gave, oh, I gave to the Reubenites, that's why. And the rest of Gilead, all Bashan, and the kingdom of Og, I gave to the tribe of Manasseh. Well, remember, they got their land. But Yahovah said, don't think that you're not going to fight with us, because if you won't fight with us, you're not going to get that land. Look what he says here. Then I commanded you at that time, saying, this is Moses, Yahovah your Elohim has given you this land to possess. All you men of valor shall cross over Arn before your brethren, brethren, men are doing the fighting, Israel seed, Israel seed are all men, but your women, your little ones, your children, and your livestock, I have, I know that you have much livestock, shall stay in the cities which I have given you. How did we protect? Was there servants maybe that stayed with the ladies, I wonder, to protect them? Well, it was at this time that Moses pleaded with Yehovah. He said this, Oh, Adonai, Yehovah, verse 24, you have begun to show your servant, your servant, Moses is Yehovah's servant. Pierce, everybody else is Moses' servant. Your greatness and your mighty hand for what Elohim is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. He says, I pray, let me cross over and see the good land before beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains and Lebanon. But Yahovah was angry with me on your account. On your account? No, on his account. He's the one that hit the rock and would not listen to me. So Yahovah said to me, listen to what Yahovah says, enough is enough. Speak no more to me of this matter. Well, now he's going to tell him, he's going to go up to Mount Pishka and he's going to die there. This is where we left off last week. This was a history lesson, an interesting history lesson, I think. Well, today I want to cover four, five, and hopefully six of Deuteronomy. Let's begin. He says, and now, Israel, they say, listen, in the New King James, the word is Shema, to the statutes and the judgments, which I shall teach you to observe that you may live. Hear that? If you obey the statutes and the judgments, you live. If you don't, you don't. This is going to be what separates a Canaanite from an Israelite. This is what's going to be, a, this is what's going to separate the whole world from true Israel in the end. You want to live? Learn to follow Yahovah and go in and possess the land which Yehovah, your father's Elohim, is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it to protect, that is, shamar, shamar, to protect, guard, protect the commandments of Yehovah, your Elohim, which I command you. We cannot add to Yehovah's word or take away from Yehovah's word. You know, one thing I want to point out to you, and I'm going to mark it in this kind of purplish color. It says statutes and judgments. You see that? Statutes and judgments in, in verse 1. It says commandments in verse 2. I really appreciate that Yehovah points this out over and over and over in Deuteronomy. This is one of the reasons why I always said, oh, read Deuteronomy first. Now I would rather have them start from the beginning. Read Deuteronomy first. Why? Because I like the fact that he points out, do his statutes, listen 
hear, shema, hear and obey. Observe the statutes, the judgments, the commandments. We're going to see it dozens and dozens of times in Deuteronomy. Do not add to his word, was the, was the second verse. He says, you shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take away from it to protect the commandments of Yahovah, your Elohim, which I command you. You know, there's some words that he's given us we can't do yet. We're not in the land yet, but there's much that we can do. But we're going to protect all of it. What he has to say is important. Whatever I command you, this is Deuteronomy 12, 32. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. Proverbs says this, every word of Elohim is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. I don't want to be found a liar. I want to stick with his words. He says in Isaiah, he actually says through Isaiah, to the Torah and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. The Torah, these are the words given through Moses. The testimony, I believe, are the words of Yahovah given through his prophets. We don't add and we don't take away from those words. Well, here's a little bit more of the history lesson. Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did at Baal Peor. For Yahweh, your Elohim, has destroyed from among you all the men. Remember, how many men did he destroy? 24,000 men who followed Baal, the master, the Lord of Peor. You will see it in the next chapter. You shall have no other Elohim existing before my face. You can't serve other Elohim and say you're his. He says, but you who held fast to Yehovah, your Elohim, are alive today, every one of you. I love this next section. Look what it says. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as Jehovah my Elohim commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and this is your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear these statutes the statutes, the judgments, the commandments, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. We see things that most people will never see. We have different understandings that most people will ever understand, and we have different wisdom that most people will never see. Why? Because we've learned to follow a spiritual Elohim and we've learned his instructions. He continues, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. This is what the people are gonna say. Israel is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has Elohim so near to it as Jehovah our Elohim is to us? For whoever, for whatever reason, we may call upon him. He hears and answers our prayers. You know, Yehovah says that he does not hear the prayer of those who do not love his Torah. Well, that says a lot. You know, there are so many times out there, well, if, if bad things happen to good people, You know what? How do we judge what is good people? In the light of Yehovah's word or in the light of the ever-changing 
doctrines and traditions of men. You know, there was a time where homosexuality a homosexual was not a good people, a good people. Now it's changed, hasn't it? We see this all the time. It's relative to the time. You know what? When we look at Yahweh's word, we have a solid rock. We're building our house not on the sands of time and public opinion. We're building our decisions, our lives on a firm foundation. And that's what these statutes and judgments and commandments are all about. This is why we're wise and understanding people. This is why Yahweh hears our prayer. Near to us. Yeah, there it is. There's a, it's near to us. He dwells with us. He's in our midst. Oh, I want to dwell in a place like that with Yahovah in my midst. It's one thing to have him in your heart. It's another thing to have his presence with us. That's going to happen again. We're going to see it. I hope we see it. Spiritually born men, they're going to see it again. Maybe not this side of death, but we will see it again. Let me look at my notes on six. This is therefore be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom, this is your understanding. Therefore be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom, this is your understanding in the sight of the peoples, the peoples who will hear the statutes and say, surely this great nation, ha, gadal, the great nation, this great nation, is a wise and understanding um. For what great nation, again, great nation, uh, Godal, Godal, Goy, Goy, Goyi, great nation, nation great, is there that has Elohim so nearest to it that Yahovah our Elohim is to us for whatever reason we call upon him. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments, statutes and righteous judgments. You know what? There's a lot of unrighteous judgments out there. Tracy and Bill know what I'm talking about. Anybody who's been involved in the court system knows what I'm talking about. We live in a wicked world. We don't know it. You know, how many times have you heard, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, you got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, baloney. No, they are the ones who have their agenda. It's all about money. Well, let's continue. First, pick up a nine. I mean, this is my translation. Only guard them and guard thy soul. Guard them, guard thy soul diligently. You know what? It's easy to stray from the path. Our loved ones, want us sometimes to stray from the path. Don't stray from the path. Remember, this was the problem with uh, men taking multiple wives, especially like Solomon did. His wives t turned him away. His women turned him away from the good things that his father had done. Guard your soul, thy soul, diligently. Lest thou forget the things your eyes have seen, lest they, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. And teach them to thy sons. Hear that? Not your daughters. To thy sons. And thy sons. Seed is actually what it says. Thy sons and thy sons. Seed. Look at how they translated it. Children and grandchildren. Folks, we get the wrong idea. We make women men. It's not helping us. It's destroying us. We're teaching women to live as men. And you know what? This is what I see in Judaism. It happens all the time. They are, they're still talking about the children. 
and the grandchildren. We don't understand the created purpose of a man and the created purpose of a woman. We've got to learn it. It's life to us. I put something on Facebook today. Confusion that comes from the New Testament concerning divorce and remarriage. You know, that's just one little piece of it. But there's so much confusion out there because we have left the statutes and the judgments and the ordinances that Yehovah is continually talking about here in Deuteronomy and forsaken them for another idea, doctrines and traditions of men. Here's Shamar, guard. We're talking about guarding Shamar. A close watching of something for guarding or protecting. Shepherds constructed corrals of briars as in, at night to protect the flocks and the predators. That was the perimeter, that was the guard that they set up. 10. Especially concerning the day you stood before Yehovah your Elohim at Horeb. When Yehovah said to me, gather the people. Remember, what people did he gather? He gathered Israel, the spiritually born men, not the gear, not the children under 20, the boys under 20. There were no ladies there. There were no servants there. Gather the people to me. Remember, he said, don't come near a woman for three days. He said that in 19. Oh, here it is right here. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready for the, for the third day. Do not come near a woman. They translate it as do not come near your wife. And so they make it like it's about sex. No, it's about being clean. Don't Come near a woman. You don't know who's clean and who's not clean. Don't go near any of them. You're going to meet with me on the mountain. Especially concerning the day that you stood before Yehovah in Horeb, when Yehovah said to me, gather the people to me, and I will let, my, let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may teach their sons, not children. Here's the word for, for it right there. It is their sons, their sons that does not say children. Then they came near and stood at the foot of the mountain and the mountain burned with fire in the midst of heaven. Hear that? In the midst of heaven, where's heaven? Heaven is the sky, the shamim. It's burning on the mountain, going up into the sky. Fire and smoke, lightning. And the mountain burned with fire to the midst of the sky. It's the heavens, the sky, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. Remember, Yahovah dwells in the fire and the smoke. You can't see him. He's Spirit Elohim, and Yehovah spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard his voice. We can't see Yehovah. So he declared his covenant. So he declared his covenant which he commanded you to perform. The Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on the two tablets of stone. And Yehovah commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments for you to do them in the land which you cross over to possess. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when Yehovah spoke to you in Horeb. Out of the midst of the fire, there's no form. What does that say about Yeshua? Form. 
not Yehovah. Yeshua is not Yehovah. At best, he's Elohim kind, like we are who keep the Passover, who left the kingdom of our birth, come into covenant with Yehovah. We're Elohim kind. We'll see that today too. And Yehovah commanded me at that time to teach the statutes and the judgments. That's what's important, the statutes and the judgments. Those who do them shall live. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when Yehovah spoke to you at Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly, corruptly, and make for yourselves a carved image in any form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Don't make Yehovah into the likeness of any male or female. You Christians, this man Jesus or Yeshua is not Elohim. Yehovah has no form. You saw no form. Remember, it said in the very first verse of Genesis that it was spirit Elohim that dwelt over the waters. The darkness, I forget what, the, what it was, but it was Spirit Elohim. He goes on, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, the likeness of a winged birds that fly in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And take heed lest you lift your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, and you feel driven to worship them and to serve them, which Yehovah, your Elohim, has given to the people under the whole heaven as a heritage, under the skies as a heritage. But Yehovah has taken you and brought you out from the iron furnace, out of Egypt to be his people, an inheritance as it is this day. You can't be Jehovah's people and dwell in the land under other Elohim. It doesn't work. You can only serve one master. We've got to learn to serve one master and one master only. Don't make covenants with them. Furthermore, Yehovah was angry with me for your sakes. Again, was he angry with them for the sakes? Let's find out. And swore that I would not cross over the Jordan and that I would not enter the good land which Yehovah, your Elohim, is giving you as an inheritance. Man, why does he keep saying that? It wasn't their fault. He was the one who hit the rock. Remember, he was supposed to speak to the rock. But he hit the rock instead. And swore that I would not cross over the Jordan, that I would not enter the good land, which Jehovah, your Elohim, is giving you as an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not cross over the Jordan. But you shall cross over and possess the good land. Oh, I want to cross over and possess the good land. Take heed to yourselves lest you forget the covenant of Yehovah your Elohim which he made with you and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which Yehovah your Elohim has forbidden you. Still talking about images. Don't follow these images. Anything. Our Elohim, Israel's Elohim is a spiritual Elohim. Not a man. Not any image at all. Take heed to yourself as you forget the covenant of Yehovah which he made with you and make yourself carved image, a carved image in the form of anything that Yehovah has forbidden you. For Yehovah, your Elohim, is a consuming fire, jealous Elohim. He is a jealous Elohim. Folks, we have no idea. We, Christians, maybe I should say those Christians, somehow make it, they use Romans 13, 
that by being a good citizen of a country, we're somehow serving Yahovah. Ridiculous. You've learned lies. Look what he says here. This is just a few verses I picked out. Therefore, understand today that Yahovah, your Elohim, is he who goes before you as, as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you, so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly, as Yahovah said to you. Deuteronomy 6. For, oh, that's the one we're reading right now. Oh, no, that's not. For Yahovah, your Elohim, is a jealous Elohim among you. Let the anger of Yahovah, your Elohim, be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. We don't want to be destroyed from the face of the earth. We've got to follow him and only him. Yahovah would not spare him. For then the anger of Yahovah and his jealousy would burn against that man. And every curse that is written in this book would settle on him. This is 29. It's right after the blessings and the curses. And Yahweh would blot, blot out his name from under heaven. I wonder who they're talking about. I don't remember. They provoke him to jealousy with foreign Elohim. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. Following foreign Elohim. Don't do it. Lawmakers and judges, you know what? Learn Gods, this word Elohim is about lawmakers and judges. You know, Israel's going to have lawmakers and judges. They're going to have Elohim in their gates. Leaders of ten, leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds and fifties. They're the Elohim. Elohim kind. The last one says, they provoke me to jealousy by what is not Elohim. They have moved me to anger by their foolish idols, but I will provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move them to anger by a foolish nation. Yehovah, our Elohim, is a consuming fire and a jealous Elohim. When you beget sons, and son's seed. Again, not children, not grandchildren, sons and son's seed. And have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make a carved image in the form of anything. And do evil in the sight of Yahovah your Elohim to provoke him to anger. Look at this. Remember, testimony of two or three witnesses. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land. This is when you do these things, which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed. And Yehovah will scatter him. Let me see what my note says. Yahweh needs two witnesses to charge any man with a capital crime. It appears that heaven and earth can be them also. Yeah, you think Yahweh doesn't see, but they see, sees. Heaven and earth sees. 27, and Yahweh will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where Yahweh will drive you. Why, but this is the predicament we're in right now, isn't it? But look what he says. Actually, I'm not even going to read this yet because it's just two more verses away. And there you will serve Elohims, lawmakers and judges, the work of men's hands. You know, we have the Constitution. We have the flag. We worship and serve the flag. We worship and serve the judges of the land. You know what? Let's not be under those. We make covenants that put us under their authority. Don't put yourself under their authority. It's our choice. Choose today whom you will serve. He says, and there you will serve Elohim, the works of men's hands, wood, stone, which neither see nor eat nor smell. But there you will seek, but from there you will seek Yehovah, your Elohim. This is where we are. But from there you will seek Elohim. 
And you will find him if you seek him with all your heart, with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days. Yes, I was under distress. When you turn to Yahovah, your Elohim, and obey his voice, for Yahovah, your lawmaker and judge, is a merciful Elohim. He will not forsake nor destroy you, nor forget the covenants of your fathers, which he swore to them. 32. For ask now concerning the days that are past. This is the latter days. Are we in the latter days? Oh, Father, let this be the latter days. Oh, I so want to see you bring Israel's seed out of Egypt once again. For ask now concerning the days that are past, which were before you since the day that Yahweh created man on the earth, and ask from one end of heaven to the other whether any great thing like this has happened or anything like it has ever been. What are we talking about? He'll tell us. Did any people ever hear the voice of Elohim speaking out of the midst of a fire? as you have heard and live? Or did any other lawmaker and judge ever try to take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation? Or attempted any Elohim? We're talking about lawmakers and judges. Can they do it? No. By trials, by signs, by wonders, by war, by, my, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by great terrors according to all that Yehovah your Elohim did for you in Egypt before your eyes. To you. No, he changes it now. He says, to thee. It was shown that thou might know that Yehovah himself is the Elohim. We're talking about Elohims in general here. Now we're talking about the Elohim. There is none other besides him. Out of the heavens, he lets you hear the voice. No. Out of the heavens, he lets you hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. On earth, he showed thee a great fire, and thou heard his voice in the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and he brought thee out of the land of Egypt with his presence and his mighty power. Seed, there's the word seed. Zara, descendant seed. Not talking about ladies descendants, we're talking about men descendants. Driving out before thee, nations greater and mightier than thee to bring thee in and to give thee their land as an inheritance as it is this day. You know what? It's going to happen again. What has been will be. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. Let's learn from Torah. Let's learn to do it differently the second time. Let's not repeat the mistakes of our fathers. Therefore, know this day and consider in your heart that Yehovah himself is the Elohim in heaven above and on earth beneath. There is no other. Hear that, folks? Yeshua is not an Elohim. At best, He's Elohim kind, one of us, one of Yehovah's men, Israel. 
You therefore shall keep his statutes and his commandments. Not their commandments, not their statutes, his statutes, his commandments, which I command thee today that it may be well with thee and thy sons after thee. This is not children. Unto thy sons, thy sons, there it is, not seeds, it's sons. Thy sons, and unto thy sons, it says. And that thou may pro prolong thy days in the land. Did you hear that? We can choose to prolong our days in the land. Ooh, isn't that interesting? You know what? The world, the people who are prospering in the flesh, they can't prolong their life. They have lots of money. They can go to the hospitals. The hospitals are going to kill them. Can't prolong your life. The thing that's going to prolong our life is what we do in following Yehovah's statutes, judgments, and ordinances. Oh, here we are, yeah. And that you may prolong your days in the land which Jehovah thy Elohim is giving thee for all time. The land is ours for all time, or should be. We're just so stinking rebellious, so full of Egypt, that we keep going back to false ways. But it was supposed to be our land for all time. Then Moses set apart three cities on this side of the Jordan toward the rising of the sun, that the manslayer may flee there, who kills his neighbor unintentionally, without having hated him in time past, and that by fleeing to one of these cities he might live. Now he's going to talk about, this is the first three cities that we set up. Bezer in the wilderness on the plateau of the Reubenites. Ramath in Gilead for the Gadites. And Golan in Bashan for the Manassites. Now this is the Torah, which Moses set before Israel's seed. They're always going before Israel's seed. It's for Israel's seed. They're going to lead their families. He's going to lead them. Now the law which Moses, now this is the law which Moses said before Israel's seed. These are the testimonies. The law is testimonies, statutes, judgments, which Moses spoke to Israel's seed after, after they came out of the land of Egypt. The commandments, the statutes, the judgments are for men after they come out of Egypt, not while we're in Egypt. Don't dwell in Egypt. Leave those Elohim. Become only Yehovah's man. I know it's hard to understand when we live in a geographical spot. But it's not about where we live. It's about who we serve. Choose this day. Remember, Joshua is in the land of the Amorites. He said, choose this day whom you shall serve. Whether it be the Elohim on the other side of the river or the Elohim in the land of the Amorites, where you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yehovah. This is how we choose a jurisdictional authority, by deciding who it is we serve. You know, most of us choose a jurisdictional authority by default. We simply do what everybody else does. Everybody else gets a driver's license, so we got to get a driver's license. Everybody else gets a business license, so we got to get a business license. Everybody else gets a social security number, so we got to get a social security number. We do what everybody else does. Everybody gets a marriage license. So we get a marriage license, put ourselves under the authority of the state and our family. They take away our kids. We don't know. We just do what everybody else does. We perish for lack of knowledge. It's after we came out of Egypt 
that we're going to learn and do Yehovah's statutes and judgments and ordinances. His testimony, statutes and judgments is what they're saying right here. On this side of the Jordan, in the valley opposite Beth, Par Beth Peor, the house of Peor, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, whom Moses and Israel see defeated after they came out of Egypt. Not going to feed him, defeat him if we're going to be in Egypt. And they took possession of his land, in the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites who were on this side of the Jordan toward the rising of the sun. From Aror, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, even to Mount Sihon. Oh, isn't that interesting? This is Mount Sihon, not Zion, but Sihon, which is, that is, Horma, Hor, 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 Herman, Herman. Remember Herman, here's Herman. We are talking about from here, Arar, the river Arnon, all the way up to Mount Hermon, which is here. This is Mount Hermon, whoops. Here's Mount Hermon. Here's Damascus. All the way up to this area. This is Bashan. This is Gilead. Where the Reubenites and the Gadites got that land. Okay. And, whoops, here, I, I, I pulled these out. You know, I did a search. I remember I said, oh, Sihon, or Sion. this happens to be spelled with a sin. A shin. Shin. Sin? Sin. Sin. Yod, Aleph, Nun. But Zion is spelled differently. It's spelled, it's spelled with a Zadok. Look what it says. I put, is Zion a, a place or a people? You know what? I think this is important that we understand that there are Zion the place, which is Jerusalem, the city of David, and Zion the people. Let me just go through some of these things for just a moment. But the inhabitants of Jebus, you shall not come here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is the city of David. Sing praises to Yahovah who dwells in Zion, declare deeds among his people. Now, now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of Israel's seat, to King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahovah from the city of David, which is Zion. Zion is a place. It's the city of David. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion that is in that is the city of David. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the fathers of Israel's seed in Jerusalem, that they might bring the Ark of the Covenant of Yehovah up from the city of David, which is Zion. But now let's look at Zion as a people. Oh, Zion! You who bring good tidings, set up into the get up into the high mountains. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Zion are a people also, a holy city, are a people. Lift up your voice with strength, lift up, lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your Elohim. Here it says, Isaiah 49. But Zion said, Yahovah has forsaken me and my Adonai has forgotten me. For Yahovah will comfort Zion. He will comfort her worst waste places. He will make her a wild, he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of Yahovah. Joy and gladness will be found in it, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens, lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, you are my people. You hear that? Zion, you are my people. 
Isaiah 52 says, awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Well, I think you get the idea. I've got many, many more that we could go through here. But uh, I think you're getting the idea. This was just a hiatus. I, it's something I was interested in. I saw Sion. Last verse. And the plains of the east side of the Jordan. Uh, oh, here we're talking about the borders. From Arwer, which is in the bank of the river Arnon, even to Mount Sion. And all the plains on the east side of the Jordan, as far as the Sea of Aqaba, that's the Dead Sea. Uh, Araba, that's the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pishka. Next chapter five. This is the Ten Commandments. And Moses called all Israel. I put this yellow and this green because I want you to I want you to understand we're talking about Israel. Every place where we're talking about your Elohim, you, thy, the you is the plural. That's why it's in green, plural you, and you, uh, singular you. So it could be each man of Israel individually. I want you to be able to see this. And, you know, understanding these pronouns is half the work, really, in reading the scriptures is figuring out which pronouns we're talking about, who's who. So he says, and Moses called all Israel, talking to Israel, and said to them, hear, oh, Israel, Shema, Israel, hear and obey the statutes and judgments which I speak in your hearing today, that thou may learn them and be careful to observe them. You know, again, this, this particular blog, you know, this is maybe an older link, um, the blog, Spiritual Seed, we have the native born man and the care. And then here it's talking about commandments were given to Yahweh's son. See, this is, they were given to Israel. The manna was given for Israel to pick up. Not for everybody, it was for Israel. They're gonna lead their families. We've got to understand who Israel is. We don't know. Well, you guys probably know, but the ones who are listening to my video oftentimes don't know. Where were we? And Moses went from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people. Oh, that's the one we were looking at before. Do not approach a woman. All right. Um, let's continue. Yehovah our Elohim made a covenant with us in Horeb. Kept our second Passover in Horeb, remember? And Yehovah did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. Bareth covenant is what we're talking about. Now, therefore, if, if you will obey, indeed obey my voice, keep my covenant, then you will be a special treasure to me above all the people of the earth. Yes, talking to Israel's seed. It's in the next verse, number six. Five through six. Here it is. And you shall be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to Israel's seed. Yahweh did not make a covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. Yahweh talked with you face to face on the mountain, you all face to face on the mountain from the midst of the fire. I stood between Yahweh and y'all at that time to declare to you the word of Yahweh 
for you were afraid because of the fire, you did not go up the mountain. He said, I, oh, well, here he is, what he's going to say. These are the beginning of the commandments. Remember, he didn't go up the mountain. We said, you go, Moses. We don't want to hear anymore. We're too afraid. He's going to head of himself. All the commandments are given to the singular masculine, the. Thou, I am Yahovah, thy Elohim, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, took us away from all the old Elohim. Moses and Aaron had already left all those old Elohim. That's why they were able to lead them. I think that's why the 144,000, the servants that are being raised up right now, are leaving their old Elohim and preparing themselves to be like Aaron and Moses all over the earth. Yehovah is raising up men like that right now. He says, Thou shall have no other Elohim lawmakers and judges existing before my face. Thou. Is he talking to each man individually? Or is he talking to Israel as one man? I always talk about the plural he. You can look at it both ways. But regardless of how you look at it, he's not talking to the ladies, not talking to the servants, not talking to the gap. Look what he says in Exodus chapter four, he's talking to Pharaoh. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says Jehovah, Israel's seed is my firstborn, my bekar, my bekar, my, my bekar. So I say to you, let my son go, that's my son, go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your bekar. My son is the plural he. The man child. This is, you know, we're talking about the Messiah being raised up, the male child. We always want to make it about Yeshua, but we don't understand the male child is a people. It's Israel. They're the ones who are going to come and deliver us as Moses came to deliver us. Yehovah is going to lead them. Darkness will go before them. Yehovah's seed, son, serves and has covenant only with him. That's who our covenant is supposed to be with, not with the governments of this land. Thou shalt have no other Elohim existing before my face. The second one, he says, Thou shalt not make for thyself, thyself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven or that is on the earth beneath on or that is heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water that is under the earth you know i really think it's supposed to say on the earth beneath because we have heaven above that would be the birds on the earth beneath beneath what beneath the heavens or that is in the water under the earth. Now we've got it all, all our bases covered, don't we? I put, how about a cross? A crucifix, are these things that are sacred to us? A flag, an eagle, the constitution, a local sports team, a retirement account. Oh, I love my retirement account. Oh, it's gonna be take such take such good care of me. No, it's not. Most Christians and Messianics worship Yeshua and treat him as their Elohim. Not only men, but women alike. He continues, I'll read it here. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yehovah, your lawmaker and judge, am a jealous lawmaker and judge, visiting iniquity on the fathers, upon the sons, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Hear that? The fathers and the sons. 
Let's take a look at that. Fathers and the sons. Here's the sons. Their sons. That's what it says. Their sons. The fathers and their sons. But showing mercy. Oh, this is so beautiful. You know, the word that they're using here, it says mercy, but it's kindness. Showing kindness. Here's the word right here. Whoops. Let's see if I can. Uh, here we go. Kindness. Kindness. Kassid. You know, I saw this word kassid, and I thought, oh, that is such an interesting word. Kassid. Kindness. And I realized we're not talking about kindness, like we're like, you know, kindness. Kindness. He created dog kind and pig kind and mankind. But he also picked did Elohim kind. Showing kindness. You know what? This is maybe a little bit hard for you to grasp. And it took me a while to figure this out. But it comes from this word kasid. Kasid. Kindness. We're talking about Elohim kindness. Showing kindness to thousands of those who keep my commandments. Look at this. This is the same word, a variation of the word. One is an adjective showing kindness. This is a noun. Gather together my saints. My saints. This is kasid. Again, kasid. It's got a yod in it, but it's the same root for this word. My kind. Gather together my kind. Gather together my kind. We're going to fight against their kind. Humankind. The ones who won't keep the commandments of Yehovah, who won't come and leave the kingdom of their birth, the ones who won't come into covenant with Yehovah. Talk about kindness. Kindness goes with the kind of people that we are. Gather together my saints. Literally, it says my kind. Kind. Here it is. Whoops, that's not it. Here it is here. Kind. Properly kind. Pious. It gets translated as saints. It's Elohim kind. He made man a little lower than Elohim. Not the angels. A little lower than Elohim. Elohim kind. We're his heirs. We're going to inherit his land. We're going to rule according to his statutes and judgments in each one of our gates. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Gather together my kind, those who cut, cut, karat, karath, cut, covenant, bereath, with me by slaughter. We're talking about kindness. Kindness. I put a dash to separate this word. Kindness comes from kind. We are Elohim kind. Now, in that context, we read about thou shalt not take vengeance nor bear a grudge against thy people's seed. Thy people's seed is Ezra kind. He's talking to the Ezra, talking about Ezra kind, and thou shalt love thy associates. Honey, this is what we were talking about this morning, the Raya. As thyself, talking about the Ezra. I am Yahovah. Here I made the green Ezra and the brown the Ger. But this is so interesting. When I saw this, it planted, who are we talking about? Thy people's seed. Um, Amim's seed. It's really seed Amim's, the people's seed. But now, this is in verse 18, 1918 of Leviticus. Look what it says in 1934 of Leviticus. It says, The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born in the land. So the stranger shall be to you as one born in the land. He's not as one born in the land, but he shall be to you as one born in the land. You shall love him as you love yourself. Who's the self? The Ezra, the other Ezra man. 
for you were Garim in the land of Egypt. I am Yehovah, your Elohim. So here he's talking about shall love him as yourself. Who's the, what were we talking about here? You shall love thy associate as thyself. The associate and the ger are one and the same. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We're going to love the ger as we love Elohim kind. He's one of us. At the next Passover, he's going to join us and become Elohim kind. The Ezra. Showing kindness. All that came from this word kindness. I think it's beautiful. I hope you like it as much as I did. Just one of the little treasures Yahweh sends along. He continues, third commandment. You shall not take the name of Yehovah thy Elohim in vain. You know what? This is so confused among the people of this world. They think it's about swearing. No, it's about swearing a vow. It's about saying you're going to do something and following through on it. I will do this in the name of Yehovah. You know what? He tells us to take vows in his name. The Jews don't like to take vows in his name. They avoid taking vows in his name, but he tells us to take vows in his name. I'll show it to you today. Thou shalt not take the name of Yehovah in vain. You know, you shall not take the name of Yehovah, your Elohim, in vain, for Yehovah will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Here is swearing an oath to Yehovah. I think I've already got it set up. And you shall not swear by my name falsely. Don't swear by his name falsely. Nor shall you profane the name of your Elohim. I am Yehovah. Deuteronomy 6. He says, you shall fear your Elohim and serve him and take oaths in his name. There it is. And take oaths in his name. Why? Because of the surety of the oath that you're going to follow through on it because it's being done in his name. You can't take his name in vain. Then Yehovah, then King Solomon swore by Yehovah, saying, May Elohim do to me and more also if, I, if Adajah, Adada, Adanajah has not, spoken, has not spoken this word against his own life. He was going to kill him. Well, there's lots of things about taking Yehovah's name in vain. I'm going to continue. Um, observe the Sabbath. You know, anybody who ever wants my notes, just contact me. I'll give you all the notes that I put together. My topic notes, my study notes, my topic notes, and these are called markups. All these things that I do on the left in the colors. These are markup files. But they're all available. All you got to do is buy yourself the New King James Version. And when I give you these files, your, your Bible will look like mine. You can then add to them, subtract from them, do whatever you want. You don't even have to have the topic notes. You can change them and, and get rid of the, the topic notes, the markup files. It, it's your choice. But they're available to you if you want them. Let's go to the next one. It's the fourth commandment. Observe the Sabbath to keep it holy, as Yehovah thy Elohim commanded you, commanded thee. Yehovah thy Elohim commanded thee. Six days thou, thou, he's commanding thee, thou shall labor and do all thy work. Six days, six one, six one, six one. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yehovah thy Elohim. In it thou shall do no work. Who's he talking to? He's talking to Israel. Nor, look, he says, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter. Okay, so the son and the daughter is not the thou, is it? Nor thy male servant, nor thy female servant, nor thy ox, nor thy donkey, nor any of thy behemoth, nor thy stranger who is within thy gates, that thy male servant and thy female servant may rest as well as thee. 
Do you understand the significance of this? Who to whom is Yehovah speaking to? It's the Ezra. There's only two men in Yehovah's kingdom, Ezra men and the Ger who dwell with them. Do you want to be Yehovah's people? Then become Yehovah's man. You first become a Ger. I'll teach you how to do it. It's in my blog. We've got to learn. We don't see it because we're still talking about the children of Israel. But obviously we're not talking about the sons and the daughters. We're not talking about the male and female servant. You know, the only one that you could argue is left is the woman. Where's the woman in all this? Where is she? I think we forget that the woman, our woman, is flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone. She's us. She's not anywhere. It didn't say, and your hand. She's my flesh. It said, your son and your daughter, your, your ox, your donkey, your behema. Not your hand. Your hand is you. But he's not talking to my hand. He's talking to me. Well, we're going to see in the 10th commandment that makes it more precise. Here, I said, where are the wives? Where are the women? They do not exist. They have become their man. They are bone. They are part of him. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. He goes on. And remember, this is still the fourth commandment. And remember that you were a, they say slave. Why do they say slave? They just translated the same word up above as servant. But now they're going to say slave. Why do they do that? It's servant. You were a male servant. You were a servant in Egypt. You were a servant in the land of Egypt. And Yehovah, thy Elohim, brought thee out by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. That therefore the Yehovah, thy Elohim, commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. He goes on. Honor thy father and thy mother as Yehovah thy Elohim has commanded thee, that thy days may be long and that it may be well with thee in the land which Yehovah thy Elohim is giving thee. Honor, show respect. Here it is, heavy. Make it heavy. What they have to say should be heavy to us. Someone or something that is heavy in weight, wealth, abundance, importance, or respect. It's heavy, but it, we're still making our own decisions. Honor your mother and your father. Do not commit adultery. You know, people, they have no clue what adultery is. Adultery is taking another man's woman. Not another woman, another man's woman. That's adultery. And when you do that, the adulterer and the adulteress are going to be put to death. But a man taking a woman and then taking another woman who's a single woman, that's not adultery. That's polygyny. It's multiple women. We don't get it. We're being trained to think that if a man takes another woman, single woman, that that's adultery. It's not. It's not. We've got to understand it. There's much to be learned. I've got a blog, Polygyny versus Polygamy. Neither one of them is adultery unless the woman is married. Okay. You shall not steal. You know, this is interesting. Um, look at look at how the Yahweh puts these together. It has the negation. This is and not. This says thou shall steal. This says and thou shall not steal. Two words is how it is for for the next few commandments. The negation. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. 
Don't tell the don't tell people that your neighbor did something that they didn't know. And this is the this is the last commandment. Look what it says. This is this is so interesting because now it's going to talk about the woman. Remember, it didn't talk about the woman before. Thy woman. But now it talks about thy woman. Here it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's woman. Thy neighbor's woman. The woman belongs to thy neighbor. Thy women belong to thee. And thou shalt not desire thy neighbor's house. So here we had uh, the wife first, the woman first. And in Exodus, it said the house first. Here's what Exodus says. Tenth commandment. You shall not covet thy neighbor's house. You shall not covet thy neighbor's woman, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his dog, or anything that is thy neighbor's. It was kind of talking about the same thing here. They just switched the, the woman and the house. And you shall not desire a neighbor's house, his field, his male servant, his female servant, his ox, his dog, or anything that is thy neighbor's. We're talking about possessions, coveting another man's possessions. That's not adultery, but we're not supposed to covet anything that our neighbor has. These words Yahweh spoke to all thy, all your assembly, all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire. Remember, he's talking to who? All the assembly is Israel seeds people. All the men of Israel seed. That's who he talked to on the mountain. Did they hear him? back in Horeb they might have but he wasn't talking to them he was talking to the Israel he was talking to Israel's seed the spiritually born men these words Yisrova spoke to all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire the cloud and the thick darkness with the loud voice and he added no more and he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me so it was when you all heard the voice from the midst of the darkness while the mountain was burning with fire that y'all came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, surely Yahovah our Elohim has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that Elohim speaks with man. Well, look what it says. It speaks with Ha Adam. He speaks with Ha Adam. Yes, he's always spoken with Ha Adam. He spoke with Ha Adam in the garden. He didn't speak to the woman until after she left and disobeyed Ha Adam. And then he reminded her, Obey your man. We have seen this day that Elohim speaks with Ha Adam, yet he still lives. Ooh, yes. We're talking about spiritually born men, not men of the flesh. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of Yehovah our Elohim anymore. Then we shall die. I don't think they would have died, but they were afraid. We serve an awesome Elohim. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living Elohim speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and lived? You go near. He's talking to Moses. You go near. And hear all that Yehovah our Elohim may say. And tell us all that Yehovah our Elohim says to you. And we will hear and do it. I wonder if that's Shema. We will hear and do it. Let's find out, just out of curiosity. Shema. And we will Shema. Yeah, I thought so. Nido. We will Shema. Then Yehovah heard the voice of your words when you spoke to me. And Yehovah said to me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, Israelites, the Ezra men, 
which they have spoken to thee. They are right in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep my commandments that it might be well with them and with their sons forever. There it is. With them and their sons. I don't know if you can see that really well. With them and their sons. It says to unto them and unto and unto their sons. This is the their and then this is the sons. The them is missing because it's being conjugated to use there. Most of them did not have a heart to serve Yehovah, and everyone over 20 are now dead. Yeah, this is what happened, isn't it? They all died. Go and say to them, return to your tents. But as for thee, talking to Moses, stand here by me, and I will speak to you all the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which you shall teach them and they, that they may observe them in the land which they, I am giving them to possess. Therefore you shall be careful to do as Jehovah your Elohim has commanded you. You shall not turn aside from the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in the way which Jehovah your Elohim has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Again, here we are prolonging our own days. Are we learning to prolong our own days by learning to follow Yahovah holy? Aaron and Caleb prolonged their days by wholly following Yehovah, didn't they? That's what we've got to learn to do. We figured out that Moses, I'm sorry, Aaron, is probably taking over the leadership of Israel at 80 plus years of age at this point. And he's going to lead them for another 40 years. I think he dies at 120 like Moses. I forget exactly. I'll look it up. Maybe I can correct this video. All right. Well, we're going to stop here. Next week, we're going to do chapter 6. Oh, man, I love chapter 6. Now, this is the commandment. And these are the statutes and the judgments. These are the things that we're going to teach our sons and our sons' sons. Not our children. We're going to talk about the Shema. Everybody talks about the Shema. They all say it wrong. They don't understand who it's being taught to because they don't know who Israel is. We'll talk about it next week. All right. Well, hey, thank you for joining me. Um, remember, this is always on YouTube. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can hear what I say every week. You know what? If you're listening live, I apologize. I love you guys for being with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you let me repeat myself over and over and over again. And I do that because it makes my video better. But you don't have to listen on the video to me twice. You get to only hear it once. Some of the stupid things I say, I take out. It's not in the other video. Uh, but you get to hear the stupid things. So I apologize for that. <laughs> I'm doing my best. You know, I'm just a servant learning to be a good servant and learning to teach what I've learned. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's uh, something that will go on after me, should Yehovah tarry on the earth. Well, I love you tons. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. We'll see you next week. Bye now. Mm -hmm.